This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Illegal gun and ammo seized in Westmoreland operation. Another illegal firearm has been seized by members of the security forces as they continue their thrust to get every illegal gun. The latest illegal firearm, a .40 pistol with a magazine containing 10 rounds of ammunition, was seized by a joint police military team during an operation in Bluefields, Westmoreland, about 4 a.m. on Saturday morning. It is the latest in a string of operations as part of the Get Every Illegal Gun campaign, which has led to the recovery of illegal firearms, the weapons which is behind most killings in Jamaica. Prime Minister Andrew Holness officially launched the campaign Friday. The campaign is said to involve strategic and targeted security operations. Additionally, there is a reward system of between $250,000 and a half a million dollars for illegal guns retrieved. No motive for murder of woman found dead in Linstead, Canefield. Police investigators are seeking to establish a motive for the murder of a woman whose body was found with stab wounds in a cane field in Cheesefield, Linstead, St. Catherine today. She has been identified as a 44-year-old Nicola Sittall, who is from the community. The discovery was made by cane cutters who raised an alarm. The police were called to the scene. The police say the woman's face was bashed in and her body had multiple stab wounds. Investigators theorize that the woman had put up a fight with her attackers and that she may have been killed elsewhere and her body dumped in the cane field. The discovery has left the residents shocked. Police woman accused of being lottery scamming mastermind arrested in U.S. A female police constable is in custody in the United States on allegations of being the mastermind of a lottery scamming group operating in Jamaica and America. Shelley and Shereen Allen was arrested on Friday. The group is being accused of defrauding over 20 elderly Americans of approximately 1.69 million U.S. dollars. It is being alleged that over 128,000 U.S. dollars of the sum was directly sent to the policewoman's account. An indictment obtained by the news indicated that Allen and the other known and unknown persons conspired to commit a fraud by wire and a conspiracy to commit fraud by mail in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1341, 1343, and 1349. The news understands that Allen was arrested by investigators of the Border Control and the Protection Division and that she had been under observation since 2019. Investigators say the policewoman conspired with others to devise and carry out a telemarketing and a mass marketing scheme that targeted vulnerable victims in order to defraud and to obtain money by means of materially false and fraudulent pretenses, representations, and promises. The probe has been dubbed the Allen Lodge Scheme Organization by U.S. law enforcement. It is reported that Department of Homeland Security databases indicated that Allen entered the U.S. from Jamaica nine times between January 2019 and September 2021. The investigators reportedly traced the transactions to Allen's U.S. bank account. Additionally, it is further being alleged that records indicate that there were 24 purchases at various retailers in Florida, including Gap Outlet, Marshalls, Macy's, Foot Locker, Old Navy, Elegance Perfume, Polo, and Victoria's Secret for a total amount of U.S. $2,440.43. It is also being alleged that the total amount withdrawn from the account from these transactions was $5,004.01. The news understands that law enforcement has identified six alleged co-conspirators said to be a part of Allen's scheme. Contacted by the news, Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime, Fitz Bailey, confirmed Allen's arrest. Bailey, however, declined to say whether she was on the radar of the police in Jamaica or if any other member of the constabulary force has been linked to the scheme. A police source told the news that Allen's arrest has left the persons disappointed. She was attached to the St. Andrew North Police Division. Jamaican students in Ukraine encouraged to make evacuation plans. 
The Foreign Affairs Ministry says it has advised the 42 Jamaican students studying in Ukraine to make preparations that would ensure their safe departure from the Western European country in the event they have to leave. Reports from international media have indicated renewed tension between Russia and Ukraine, with talks that the Eastern European and the Northern Asian country is planning military action against Ukraine. On Friday, Minister of Foreign Affairs Kamina Johnson-Smith said she has directed the Jamaican Embassy in Berlin, which is responsible for the overseeing relations with Ukraine, to undertake a welfare check on nationals. The students are pursuing tertiary studies in the cities of Kharkiv and Donetsk. The indications from the embassy are that, while reports have been reflecting calm, some students have this week expressed unease with the situation, and in that context, as we have previously advised, they have been encouraged to make preparations in the event that they decide to leave the country, on short notice, Johnson Smith said. She said students' preparation must include checking the availability of flights and ensuring that they have valid visas for the UK, Schengen countries and or the US to facilitate the transit arrangements should they become necessary. Students should also inquire of their universities whether any arrangements are being contemplated for emergencies, including postponement or facilitation of remote sitting of exams, she said. Johnson Smith said that 12 nationals are in Russia and none is affected by the tensions reported in the international media. She said nationals are to advise the embassy of any emergency developments and of their decisions whether or not to leave should the situation in their locations deteriorate. The minister said the mission in Berlin will continue to monitor the situation. Scoured relationships between Russia and Ukraine stem from as far back as 2014 with Russia's annexation of Crimea. The United States and the United Kingdom have promised further sanctions if Russia invades Ukraine. Russia has, however, denied this despite reports that it has placed an estimated 100,000 troops, tanks, artillery and missiles near Ukraine's frontiers. Two men killed in early morning gun attack at a coronation market. The busy coronation market in downtown Kingston was the scene of a double murder early on Saturday morning. The deceased have been identified as a 50-year-old shopkeeper Carlton Armstrong of Bond Street, Kingston 14, and a 21-year-old Arnoldo Turner of Freeman's Hall in Albertown, Trelawney. Preliminary reports reaching the news are that the men were shot dead by armed men in the market about 12.30 a.m. They were later pronounced dead at hospital. Police, however, have sought to assure that despite the double murder, persons can conduct their regular shopping activities at the market. Law enforcers are maintaining a presence in the area as they continue to probe the murders. A motive for the killing has so far not been established. Security experts are concerned about effectiveness of government's incentive program. Security experts are expressing reservations about how effective the government's plan to give monetary incentives for the recovery of illegal guns will be. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced the government will be setting up a fund to give rewards of between $250,000 and $500,000 to persons who provide information on illegal guns. But security consultant Robert Finzi Smith says that this could create a cash source for criminals. I am not sure if they quoted properly, but someone started at $500,000, give me that amount and I'll use $100,000 and buy a Glock, Finzi Smith said. Meanwhile, criminologist Dr. Jason McKay says the issue of criminals exploiting the reward system is a real concern. However, he says safeguards can be put in place to make the program more effective. There has to be concerns about creating a market for persons who trade out their old guns to new ones. But that is not a new fear. It was being considered before. Guns are expensive. I'm sure they won't be offering the market price on it, so I don't think it will encourage the gunmen to give up the guns, but I think it will encourage persons to give information, Dr. McKay noted. In the meantime, the security experts say they believe the proposed legislative changes will be the most impactful of the measures announced by the Prime Minister. 
Holness says he will in a few days take a new firearms bill to Parliament to introduce harsher penalties for illegal gun possession. However, McKay says he wants the new provisions to deny bail to persons caught with an illegal gun. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.